Let's begin with this report on how new technology is making life a bit more predictable for television weathercasters. Is there any hope for this group of old, maligned friends? Here's Gary Probst's report. Jerry Hodak is so accurate, some people think the weather does only what he tells it to. Congratulations, Hodak. You did it again. In fact, when the weather's bad, he gets the blame. Cute, Hodak. Real cute. When the weather turns bad, folks tend to blame television forecasters. Part of that's because people like Detroit's Jerry Hodak are more than mere announcers. They're high-tech prognosticators, using the latest in satellite technology to show viewers what Mother Nature has to offer. High-tech weathercasting started with the development of weather technology at the University of Wisconsin. Satellite dishes provide TV forecasters with images from outer space. Satellite signals are blended with computer graphics so people like Jerry Hodak can use them creatively. Those forecasters who have learned how to use it can use the computer to use a series of weather graphics or weather maps or satellite photos to depict how a weather system is moving, how rapidly it's moving, and eventually what it's going to do to his viewing area. And that really is the thing that you have to concentrate on, preparing a weather cast that is going to communicate to the viewer just what the weather is going to do. At the present time, weathercasters are given a simple radar reading from the satellite. Computers provide color enhancements so people like St. Louis weatherman Ron Yeros can show pockets of intense rain or snow throughout the United States. Southern Michigan, no, this is going to bypass us, staying to the northeast. In fact, in the upper... Ron can also focus in on Missouri and Illinois to show viewers the magnitude of storms moving into his station's viewing area. Currently, he can give the folks at home a few hours of prior notice, but by 1986, all TV weathercasters should be able to show where storms will develop at least 24 hours in advance. At the University of Wisconsin, researchers in the meteorology department are working with the National Weather Service to build a computer satellite hookup, showing temperature and moisture readings from the upper atmosphere. Those readings are combined to produce a contour map. A 40 to 60 figure means there's a good chance of thunderstorms, even if the skies are still clear. That the public can be uh, pretty well assured that if those probabilities are that high that uh, thunderstorms are going to occur and uh, he would hopefully alter his day's activities based on these improved forecasts. An example of this new technique is this series of satellite readings of Iowa. Skies were clear in the morning with no visible clouds to the west. But by early afternoon, storms were building in the upper atmosphere, and by evening, they were cutting a path across the Hawkeye State. Certainly, it's going to still remain a very difficult problem to isolate, for example, what counties are going to experience severe weather as opposed to neighboring counties. Uh, but uh, areas covering uh, several counties, uh, that type of forecast uh, area will be improved significantly. While they're waiting for that technology, TV forecasters will continue to explain the weather through computer graphics. Touch pads or light pens are used to draw advancing cold fronts and to illustrate the path of a system. Some forecasters also use computers to entertain. Ron Yaros builds life-size electronic sketches. On computer, you combine those two and through all the equations, it comes out with our human temp. And if you step outside right now, it tells us that it really feels like 107 degrees in the human body. With all of this new gadgetry, there's a fine line between entertainment and information. Jerry Hodak's been giving the weather since the days of broadcast in black and white. It's a pleasure for him to use a computer, but he's constantly on guard against letting that device carry him away with his imagination. If the forecaster isn't careful, uh, he can be tempted really into using all of these bells and whistles and, and turn his weather presentation almost into a you know, like a scoreboard on a pinball machine. Something's always flashing and something's always moving. If it doesn't, however, communicate to the person at home just what the weather is going to do, then I, it's really not accomplishing anything. TV weather is big business. It often determines the ratings for the entire newscast. With millions of dollars in advertising revenue at stake, it's not enough to be just a good on-air personality. Weathercasters have to become computer experts in order for their stations to promote them as the people to watch. Mother! Mother! What kind of son would do this to his mother? Why do I think weathercaster Jerry Hodak has that boy-next-door look? 
Well, it might have something to do with the fact he really is a neighbor of ours. And by the way, Jerry, maybe your mom will forgive and forget if you use that new technology to bring her some sunshine.